Hi friends, today we're doing Unit 7, Lesson 3, The Planets Closest to the Sun. We're going to start by going over the key vocabulary words that you'll be hearing in today's reading. Our first word is frigid, which means extremely cold. Our second word is greenhouse, a building with a transparent glass or plastic roof and walls made to trap in heat from the sun and grow plants all year round. Our next word is NASA, an acronym for the National Aeronautics and Space Administration an organization in the United States that directs space travel and research. And our last word is polar, related to the pole of a planet or the area surrounding it. We are now going to move into today's reading. Would you like to take an out of this world trip? Over the next few days, we are going to go on an exciting tour of space in our very own classroom spaceship. We'll start by traveling to the planet that is closest to the sun, Mercury. As we approach the planet, you will see many craters on its surface the result of hundreds of meteoroids hitting the planet. You will probably notice right away how small it is compared to our planet Earth. At one-third the diameter of Earth, Mercury is the smallest planet in our solar system. It's certainly hot there. Our spaceship is reading the surface temperature as being 750 degrees Fahrenheit. The side of Mercury that is facing the sun is very hot, but the side of the planet that is facing away from the sun, the dark side of Mercury, is frigid, dropping to negative 300 degrees Fahrenheit. You might have guessed that Mercury gets very hot during the day because it is so close to the sun. But why does it get so cold at night? It's because Mercury has no real atmosphere. Even though there are occasionally a few gas particles around the planet, without a real atmosphere there is nothing to trap the sun's heat to make it stay warm on the side of the planet that is not facing the sun. The smallest planet in our solar system, Mercury, makes its orbit very quickly around the sun. Even though Mercury's year is short, it rotates very slowly on its axis. So its days are very long. One day on Mercury takes about 58 Earth days. How would you like to have the sun set and have it stay dark for about a month's worth of Earth days before the sun rises again? Now let's head for the second planet from the sun in our solar system, Venus. The first thing you'll notice about Venus is that, besides being Earth's closest neighbor, it is practically the same size as Earth. Like Earth, Venus has, also has an atmosphere. But unlike Earth, the atmosphere of Venus is made up of very thick gases, including lots of carbon dioxide. Venus's thick, cloudy atmosphere is also very dense, with 90 times the pressure or heaviness of Earth's atmosphere. Venus is actually hotter than Mercury, more than 850 degrees Fahrenheit. Venus is the hottest planet in our solar system. The reason it is hotter than Mercury is that Venus's atmosphere creates a greenhouse effect, which means its dense atmosphere acts like a thick blanket trapping the sun's heat at the surface of the planet. This causes the planet's surface temperature to rise because the heat can easily escape into space. The next stop on our tour of our solar system is home sweet home. Earth, the third planet from the sun. From way out here in space, it looks different from all of the other planets. Planet Earth appears as a swirl of blue, white, and green thanks to our water-filled oceans the clouds of our atmosphere and the green of the planets growing on our planet. It looks bright and glowing and alive. We live on a very beautiful planet. Let's zoom past Earth and head toward the fourth planet from the sun in our solar system, the red planet, Mars. Mars is the last of the four rocky planets in our solar system. As soon as you see it, you know why it's called the red planet, because it really is reddish. The red color is caused by the presence of the rust in the surface rocks. Even though Mars is only half the size of Earth, it still takes about 24 hours for it to rotate on its axis. So a day on Mars is really the same length as a day on Earth. Like Earth, the red planet has an atmosphere, and even polar ice caps made of frozen water. But the thing that may really catch your eyes as we get closer is our solar system's tallest volcano, Olympus Mons, which is three times as high as Mount Everest, Earth's tallest mountain. That's right, Mars has the tallest volcano in our entire solar system, much larger than any here on planet Earth. As we prepare to leave the Martian orbit, we will pass by its two moons, Phoebos and Deimos. The planet Mars was named for the Roman god of war Mars, who was called Ares by the ancient Greeks. Phobos and Deimos were Ares' two sons, We'll have to go through the asteroid belt to get from Mars to Jupiter, the fifth planet from the Sun. The distance between Mars and Jupiter is more than three times the distance we've traveled so far. Do you see Jupiter? 
there's no way you can miss it if you try. Remember, Jupiter is the largest planet in our solar system, and it's absolutely gigantic. It's so big that more than 1,300 Earths could fit inside it. Did you know that Jupiter has rings? Saturn is famous for its beautiful rings, but Jupiter has them too, in fact. All four of the gas giants in our solar system, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune, have rings. Though the rings are not visible in many images you see of Jupiter, Uranus, and Neptune. You may be wondering if we could land on the surface of Jupiter. Like the other gas giants, there's not a solid surface to land on, just hundreds of miles of gas, below which is a sea of liquid hydrogen. Besides, Jupiter's atmosphere is extremely cold, stormy, and windy. These storms are what give Jupiter that marbled appearance. Do you see that giant spot on its side? That's called the Great Red Spot, and it is a gigantic storm that's bigger than the entire Earth. There's no way we could land a spaceship there. Let's take a look at some of Jupiter's moons. Scientists have discovered more than 60 moons so far, so there are many to choose from. Here are four moons discovered years ago by Galileo Galilei, a scientist you will hear more about later. Their names are Callisto, Ganymede, Lo, and Europa. Made of materials ranging from frozen ice to molten or melted rock, these natural satellites have amazing sights, which include frozen oceans and volcanoes. The distance we must travel to get to the sixth planet from the Sun in the solar system Saturn is about the same distance it took us to get from Mars to Jupiter. It's far. Like Jupiter, Saturn is another gas giant, and its atmosphere has winds that are even stronger than hurricane winds on Earth. But what may take your breath away is the sight of the rings. They are absolutely beautiful. You might be surprised to learn that Saturn's rings aren't solid. They are made up of pieces of rock and ice. Astronomers believe that debris in some of Saturn's rings is held in place by a combination of the pull from Saturn and the pull of some of Saturn's many moons. The moons that are believed to help hold some of Saturn's outermost rings in place are called shepherd moons. It's time to head to the seventh planet from the sun in our solar system, Uranus. If you thought the trip between Jupiter and Saturn was far, then you may want to sit back and take a nap. The space between the planets gets bigger out here where the gas giants are. Uranus is about twice as far from the sun as Saturn is. No wonder astronomers didn't discover Uranus until after the telescope was invented. It's a long way away from Earth. It took the NASA spacecraft Voyager 212 years to get to Uranus from Earth. As we approach Uranus, you may be wondering why it appears to be rolling on its side. The poles of Uranus are in different positions than the poles of other planets. Uranus's axis is tilted a lot more to its side than the other planets in our solar system. Many scientists think the axis became so far tilted during a collision that happened when the solar system was forming. Like the other gas giants, Uranus also has rings and moons, though the rings are not easy to see like Saturn's rings. Finally, we have arrived at the last planet, eighth from the sun in our solar system, Neptune. Even though astronomers know a celestial object was there before they identified it, the planet Neptune was discovered fewer than 200 years ago. In 1846, it is the largest of the four gas giants in our solar system. Neptune has two rings around it that are hard to see, many fewer than Saturn. Scientists don't know as much about Neptune as they do about some of the other planets. It's hard to study because it's so far away. Astronomers think Neptune has at least 13 moons. Like Jupiter, Saturn, and Uranus, Neptune doesn't have a solid surface to land on, making it a bad place for spaceship landings. Let's look beyond the last planet, Neptune, farther out into space. Objects beyond our eight planets are called trans-Neptunian. Here is where we find the dwarf planet Pluto. There are many other trans-Neptunian celestial bodies in our solar system, even farther away than Pluto, that astronomers are only beginning to discover. The distances in space between these objects are astronomical. And beyond our solar system, there's a whole neighborhood of stars. And beyond that neighborhood of stars, there are billions of other neighborhoods of stars. Why, there's a whole universe out there just waiting for us to learn more about it. You may now move on to Unit 7, Lesson 3, Google Form.